They did it. They actually did it. Ladies, gentlemen, esteemed guests outside of the gender binary, my name is the Maestro, better known as Ovaltine Poppy if you've run into me inside of the Crucible. And today we're going to be discussing hand cannons. Bungie and their most recent squad have announced that they have some big changes coming to Beyond Light. The biggest is that 150 round per minute hand cannons, as we know them, will no longer exist. Our only option for a 150 round per minute hand cannon will be Sunshot. So what exactly does this mean? Well, it means that all of our favorite 150 RPM hand cannons, Spare Rations, Dire Promise, Waking Vigil, all of these will be joining the Adaptive Frame family. These are your 140 round per minute hand cannons inside of Beyond Light. Honestly, I thought they were going to make the move the other way around. For us, it didn't make much sense. For me, it didn't make much sense to have two families of hand cannons that perform so similar to each other um, being two distinctly different archetypes. But then again, I thought about it. Why would you use a 140 over a 150? It didn't make a whole lot of sense. And the reason it didn't make a whole lot of sense is because in Shadowkeep, uh, the expansion that came out back last fall, uh, there were a lot, a lot of changes made to hand cannons, some blanket changes, not just the archetypes, but to hand cannons as a weapon family, as a weapon type uh, that affected their precision damage values inside of PVE, that affected their effective range fall off and how much weight the range stat had on overall weapon performance. I think this is a good change. Hear me out. I thought they were going to make everything a 150. They have stated in the TWAB that the reason they have chosen to go with the 140 uh, subfamily is because the competitive atmosphere of the game leads to 150s being too dominant and oversaturating the playing field, which I can definitely understand. For season 10, it felt like I was getting killed by nothing but thorn and spare rations. And in season 11, it felt like I was getting killed by nothing but dire promise. They've stated that they want to use the 140 rate of fire because 140s have a good time to kill but still give other weapon archetypes breathing room, uh, which is understandable. They've also mentioned 600 round per minute auto rifles um, within those archetypes of weapons that will have breathing room. Also, quick side note, 600 RPM autos are also getting slightly nerfed in Beyond Light. They have not said any changes about their critical damage, but their body shot damage is being brought down from 16 per body to about 14 per body. Uh, so hopefully that provides some more breathing room for other weapons as well. But back to our hand cannons. I think this is going to leave us in a very strange spot, and that spot is going to be the exotics since they are effectively immune to sunsetting for the time being. Exotics are going to be our bread and butter in terms of the Beyond Light sandbox. I think Ace of Spades is going to be the big man on campus. Ace has always been, in, in my opinion, Ace has consistently been the best feeling 140 to use. Um, however, I did not use this a lot following the nerf to hand cannons, uh, mainly because as good as it was, why, would, why wouldn't I just use a 150? Um, which meant if I wanted a 150, I was either using Sunshot or I was using Thorn. Thorn, I think is going to be a top tier option in Beyond Light. As a 150, this thing is nasty. It was everywhere inside of Trials, Competitive, even in 6v6. If you were playing Quick Play, you, you saw this weapon. I think, I think Thorn is going to be absolutely monstrous um, as a 140 RPM. Not necessarily to say it'll be at the levels that it was in, you know, D1 or, you know, Vanilla Thorn levels. Um, I admittedly did not play Destiny 1. 
um, but I I think this weapon is going to be very good um, as a 140. 140s, as you know, have a bit higher impact damage. They have higher range to compensate for not shooting as fast. And with everything being a 140, I think this is going to be the play. Um, definitely be on the lookout for Thorn and Ace to be standouts. But with everything becoming a 140, even in terms of sunset weapons that are going to be going away that won't be relevant in the beyond light sandbox for pve and power enabled pvp i think we may see some old favorites return with that being said folks i think it might be time to dust off of better devils we may see kindled orchid come back into play there are so many 140s that i think were previously forgotten about that if people have roles for them uh they're going to come back into the limelight um, and I'm speaking on that only in terms of like quick play, obviously, you, you know, in power enabled PVP, you're not going to be able to really use these. Um, but in quick play, I think, um, some of our favorite 140s may, may come back. I think dire promise as far as our leg, as far as our legendary goes, I think this will still remain King of the Hill. Um, dire promise, uh, it gets away from sort of that previous philosophy that destiny had in terms of meta when it came to perk selection. Um, for us as players, you know, all we wanted was reload and damage. That was the most effective thing to have. Speed up your reload, do more damage, combination of the two, you're set. <laughs> Dire Promise being reintroduced in Season 11 kind of broke that mold a bit, um, with most of the perks being for overall consistency and weapon feel as opposed to reload and damage. Um, this can roll with things like opening shot, range finder, ricochet rounds. Um, you know, it's the stats outside of the reload and the damage that actually matter. Um, you can get amazing rolls on Dire Promise. I think this is why it's gonna be so strong. You have a per, you have a weapon that has great base stats, um, that rolls with great perks, and has great options in terms of masterworks. I think Dire Promise is gonna be, you know, it's gonna remain a top tier option in PvP. Um, even as a 140, um, I like I like the idea of leveling the playing field. Um, we had a big issue with weapon diversity, um, and I think these past two seasons showed that. Um, for anybody that was around in season 10, we suffered through hard light and mind benders and spare benders. You know, spare rations, mind bender combo, constantly, trials, elimination, survival quick play control clash didn't matter you saw those weapons i don't know where everything else is gonna fall we've heard of the changes that are going to be coming to adaptive auto rifles sniper rifles are going to be getting a change to their aim assist um in terms of how much aim assist they have depending on their scope type lower zoom scopes are going to have less aim assist uh, higher zoom scopes are going to have more uh, but overall, I think the I think the changes are going to lead to a lot more weapon combos. So I think we'll still we're still always going to see hand cannon, shotgun. We'll see hand cannon, sniper. Um, I think some people may be playing double primary again. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be too far fetched to think that we'll be seeing hand cannon pulse rifle be a thing. Um, that's a combo I've loved playing for a while now. I think a lot more people are going to adopt it. I don't think the range to, I don't think the nerf that they're going to have to 600 RPM auto rifles will hurt them too much in terms of their body shot damage, um, but I definitely will expect pulse rifles to enter the fray again, specifically the high impact frame pulse rifles, those just recently got buffed this season, so that's going to be your cold denials, your Redrick's broadsword, uh, your ice steams, um, Premonition, if, you, if you've got a roll of that from the moon, Premonition, I think is going to be really good, even though it's being sunset. Once again, it's another quick play weapon. Um, but things like things like Redrix's, I think, are still going to have a place in quick play. Um, I think the big dogs are definitely going to be Cold Denial and Vigilance Wing. Cold Denial was just introduced this season um, as a season pass weapon that you can get from Umbral Ingrams. You can farm a couple of rolls for that. Performs very well in PvP and in PvE. If you don't have one of those, I would highly suggest you crack open a couple of Ingrams and uh, lock down a roll. I think Vigilance Wing is probably going to be the standout. Um, I think for the first couple weeks of the sandbox, unless they you know introduce something crazy... I think we're just going to be looking at exotics being king of the hill right now. Um, you know, it's going to come down to do I want thorn, do I want ace, um, or do I want vigilance wing? And I think those are going to be our go-tos for the first couple weeks of Beyond Light, if not the first couple months. 
um, you know, barring what they do with the new weapons. We don't know all the new weapons that are going to be coming. Um, we're just going to have to wait and see. But I think Thorn, Ace, Vigilance Wing, Cold Denial, and Sunshot. Sunshot being the lone 150, I think is definitely going to have a place in the Beyond Light sandbox. Um, so I think those are going to be our go-tos in Beyond Light. Overall, I like the change to hand cannons. I understand why they didn't make everything a 150 with how oppressive 150s were and how oversaturated they were, um, you know, in the last couple of seasons um, in these sandboxes. So I'm excited to see where it goes. I really want to I really want to love the sandbox. I want to love Beyond Light. I want to love everything that Destiny has to offer. I think Season of Arrivals was a good season. I like what they did in mixing up the perks that they had offered to us and kind of getting away from Outlaw and, you know, Rampage or Outlaw Kill Clip being our go to's on any weapon. Uh, but Outlaw is also getting buffed, you know, plus 50 to plus 70 in terms of the reload speed stat. Um, so I think Outlaw is going to be another perk that enters a fray. I think, I think overall this is going to be good for the health of the game, and it's also going to give some insight as to what kind of weapons are going to come. Uh, they have confirmed that Hawk Moon is coming back. Uh, for those of you who played D1, Hawk Moon had the one in the chamber perk, um, which is... I don't know what state Hawk Moon is going to come back, but I, I pretty much figured something like this was going to happen. They wouldn't bring back a weapon um, in an archetype that wasn't going to be buffed or wasn't already competitive. So I think this is right up their alley. Um, I'm excited to see what everything else holds. I'm excited for the change to aggressive frame hand cannons, you know, going from 110s to 120 RPMs, um, along with that range buff that they're getting. I think they're going to have a spot in the sandbox too. Um, even things are going to be sunset, you know, stuff like Duke, I think is going to have a place. Um, True Prophecy um, that came back. True Prophecy, I think, is definitely going to have a space. We should we should keep a lookout on that. And Loud Lullaby, it's from the moon, is getting sunset. Um, but I think I think if you play Iron Banner, Criminal's Dagger, if you lock down a good roll of Criminal's Dagger, I think that's going to help out a lot. So I'm excited to see how the 120s are going to play. Um, we have not heard a whole lot of news about aggressive frame hand cannons, so I'm excited that they're even being mentioned. But yeah, that wraps up our kind of rundown of hand cannons, the changes, and pretty much everything that they've gone through over the last two seasons and what they're going to become in Beyond Light. Um, I can't wait to play it. I can't wait to get my hands on it and test it out. And hopefully I will see y'all in the Crucible. Thank you so much for coming and watching. Please be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. We'll have more videos coming soon. And if you want to see gameplay in action, go ahead and follow me down at twitch.tv slash Juju the Maestro. Link to that will be in the description as well. Thank you all so much and have a great one. Peace out.